Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soul in Studio B today with the part two of my digitals uh, series. Hopefully there's just going to be two, but if you do have questions that have not been answered in these two videos, please put them down in the comments and I will do a third follow up with like most asked questions. Again, like I said in the last video, I am not an expert. I am just sharing with you the things that I have learned and things I have tried um, why they worked or didn't work and that sort of thing. So if you're just joining me for the very first time, welcome. I hope if you enjoy this video, you'll please give me a thumbs up, click on subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you'd like a notification, uh, click on the little bell and you'll get a little notice every time I post a new video. So the last video I uh, was kind of going over um, digitals, um, the different types, different qualities, what kind of papers you might want to print them on, and that sort of thing. I also covered do's and don'ts as far as licensing um, and just kind of a variety of things in that first step of what to look for when you're buying them and then how you may want to change things um, and print them. Uh, I did leave out a couple things. One was in the do's and don'ts regarding licensing, and the second was another way to print them. So really quick, I won't try to dwell on this too much, but um, with regard to licensing for Pinterest specifically. So I have a Pinterest account, and I don't use it very much because I do sell items in my Etsy shop and on a website and that sort of thing. I have Pinterest that I share whatever I'm selling um, because there are people that follow my Pinterest, but don't maybe follow every other social media outlet. I don't use Pinterest that much, um, but my understanding of it, I've had an account for a long time, is that it's like bulletin boards, um, inspiration boards, that sort of thing. I know it's used a lot more expansively now than maybe when it was originated, but when it first came out, that's kind of what I thought of it as our bulletin boards that you can share with other people or keep private. It's kind of a way of organizing your own collection of things that you like. Um, if you want to get ideas and be inspired, you go to Pinterest and you'll find all kinds of things. Well, a lot of those things might be for sale, and so that's not a problem. It's going to be a link to where you can buy it. But if something is a link to a freebie, you're now giving it away to the entire world if you're posting it on your Pinterest board. So I think sometimes if you are a person that sees things on Facebook or that kind of thing, when you click on you want to save it, sometimes they'll, where do you want to save it? Do you want to email it to yourself? Do you want it to save it to your Pinterest board? That sort of thing. People are doing that and putting it on Pinterest um, so that they can find it later and it's a way of organizing things rather than just saving it in Facebook or wherever they found it. They may see it on Pinterest and you know it's it kind of snowballs then if someone shares it and the next person, next person. If your boards are public, you're now sharing that with everyone and anyone who sees it can share it and it goes on and on and on. A better thing to do to not offend the artist when they have specifically said this is for just this Facebook group or just for these Patreon customers, uh, patrons, that sort of thing. They don't want it to be maybe shared with everyone. Um, that's their work product and that's their choice. You might think just because it's a freebie, why do they care? But maybe it was a special thing they did for that certain group of people um, that are patrons or follow them on their Facebook group. So it's not a, for up to us to decide why or if they should or not, that's their decision. So to honor that, if you're gonna save it on a Pinterest board for your own organizational use, make that board not be public. Make it a pri your own private um, thing. I have lots of boards on my Pinterest account, but I only make public the ones that I know are okay to make public. It's my own work that I'm selling or whatever. But other things may not be and they could have been shared by someone who didn't have the license to do that. And now it's just kind of, you know, exponentially grown to include everyone. So just keep that in mind if you are saving things to your Pinterest, that if it's not something that's public, you need to put it on a private board. Okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to cover that I missed was another way that I like to print on. And I actually gave you a sneak peek not realizing that I did not address it specifically. Um, one thing that I love printing on, and again, all these are done with, well, mostly, here's the one that's not, but um, with Roxy Creations uh, French Chateau series, 
I've printed onto um, recycled envelopes. Not knowing what I'm going to use them for, I print front and back. Some of them may end up being glued down one side, but I really like, I have one here where I've done this, I think, um, even folding them into signatures for double pockets. I say that and I have one here somewhere, I think, like this. So this would be the envelope printed, and then I've even stitched around it. And now it's kind of like a little wallet thing, but it can be stitched in as a signature. So I'm I'm kind of in the process of making a whole bunch of kind of already decorated up little double pockets. But all these are done with envelopes. So um, I've used them, you know, I can't share this actual thing. Um, I suppose if I sold a package of envelopes now... Um, that would be okay because I've printed them onto something recycled and I'm selling them as that, not as the actual digital. Um, again, you can just, you know, use them as little flips in your journals, as uh, little tucks in your journals, as little pockets in your journals. So um, that's just another thing that you can print on. Um, you know, this one was done as a little flip that's in the envelope. And then there's also a little tuck on this side from the flap that I've extended. So um, lots of different things that you can print on, including recycled things. Um, okay, so the other thing that I was going to cover in this video is the main subject, which is different ways to store. And then I'm gonna do a little tutorial. So starting with um, the full, um, full kits and that sort of thing. I store my own uh, kits that I've created because I make reference to them often in uh, my videos, you know, that are related. So I once I've printed them out, I do like a demo so that you can see all the pages. And I didn't mention this in the last one, but um, I want to, I may do a follow-up video of comparing i might print some things out here while i'm on my just cheap epson printer that has the cartridges and then on my good printer the i call it my good printer it's more expensive printer the echo tape printer um, it prints borderless and it i can print on this epson high quality presentation paper and i always do my covers of this so that you can see um, how intense the color is and that sort of thing. So I may do a video later kind of where I do um, compare two different printers because I know a lot of people maybe have a real inexpensive printer and they won't think that it, it'll do as well. And it may do just fine. So I store those kits, um, all my own, in these file pockets. And then that way I can put them in um, a folder, you know, labeled, and then I just have all mine that I've done. When I print other people's out, um, I've done it, I've stored them two ways that I really like. Um, one, I love these little plastic bins. Um, this one was started out being digitals. Um, but then when I came here, I wanted to bring some junk mail and envelopes and things um, so that I could kind of, I've been doing a lot of organizing um, and kind of mass, mass making kind of thing. Um, while I'm here in Studio B, and so I wanted to bring a bunch of junk mail to paint and work on. Um, but these are great. These are like 9 by 12 size, um, and you could fit quite a bit in there. Most people, you know, you're going to be printing out digitals to have on hand, but you might not have a ton because you're, you're using them. I try to print out, you know, a fair amount so that I always have a few things, but, um, you know, just so I have some choices. But it doesn't take up a lot of space, so I also really like these are zippered. Um, from Mead. Uh, this, I just got these at Walmart and it's nice because there's a front pocket. I put some of the fabric pieces in there that I printed, but these are, um, you know, little divided sections. And then if I want, I haven't labeled them, but I could label by, you know, Roxy Creations or Fox Creative or Bohemian Crafting. And then I kind of know, um, you know, I have printed out from them what I, what I've, what I have available to kind of start working on. So, and I've also got some just tea stained paper and stuff in here too. So these are really handy. Um, and then these zipper close. So for me traveling back and forth, um, in addition to those bins, these are also great. So um, those are just kind of some ways to store your full sheets that you have. 
Um, and then for the little bits and pieces, I started out with these and I really like them. They came, um, you can get different sizes. Um, I got these online. There's actually several different brands. These are called, when you're looking for them, uh, photo storage, I think, for uh, like four by six photos, that kind of thing. And they're a nice size. Um, they come in different, they don't come individual. Well, they may come individually. I bought them where they were like six into another case. Um, so that you can, you know, have a bunch of different subjects and then just carry the whole case. The problem that I had with these, as far as like all this little stuff, you know, this little stuff doesn't always take up the whole thing. So I don't have that much. I'm using a lot of real estate to store some tiny things. Uh, the other thing is then I want to open this and dig through it, which I like doing that. But the problem is when I'm actually making cards or doing things, I may have three or four of these sitting around on my table and I don't have that much room. And so I end up wanting to, I, I forget to close them, you know, because I'm in and out of them for hours. So I might have a pile sitting there kind of half open like this. They're everywhere, you know, they're stacked on each other. I'm digging through them. You knock one off on the floor and now they're everywhere. So they're not, if, you, if you're just working with one, it's not a big deal. I do like digging through them. But if you're working with multiples, they just take up too much space on my table. Um, so I'm switching kind of from these to what I'm going to demo you today. Um, but I will still use these. They're good for larger things. You know, these are all um, some bigger, you know, cards and things like that that I've cut up um, that I have. So they'll they'll work for that scraps and things like that they're handy for too. So I will still use these. I just think for my tiny ephemera when I don't have a full box, it's kind of a waste of space. So the other idea that I had seen lots and lots of people doing and I've always wanted to make one but I never had were um, ephemera storage books, binders, folders, whatever you have. Um, and I had never made one, but I just, I loved seeing other people's and, you know, how they would just could see everything they have. Now mine, I kind of have each thing a little full. I, I kind of, my goal is once I get more of these pockets made, I'll kind of spread them out, you know, a little more. And these, I think I'll actually, I'm going to move, but I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go. They're perfect for like fussy cut flowers. And again, I have these kind of full, um, I like doing them by color, um, but I want, I might, may want to make them, you know, spread out like this. So I really can see each thing, um, instead of kind of digging through a big pile of things. So I finally made one. Um, this was my first one. It, I still have room in here for lots of things I haven't even put pockets on yet. But because I was brand new and not sure the size of pockets to make any of that sort of thing, I liked the fact that the way this one was bound is I can add to it. It's expandable. So I finally decided to make my own um, when I found these volumes, a 1944, 1945, New Standard Encyclopedia um, books at a local shop. So I thought the covers were perfect for this type of thing because I could make them expandable. So when I purchased these, um, I had not even thought of this type of binding. So you may be able to find things. I went to a couple of uh, thrift stores here uh, where I am this week. Um, I'll have to do another video because I found some great stuff. But one thing I noticed um, having already purchased this is you can find photo albums like this. Um, so even, you know, for your ephemera storage, if you need, there might be bigger. There are some smaller ones, you know, that maybe just worked for two photos, postcard um, things, different kind I saw different ones I saw a vintage one that was actually really neat I just didn't need it but it actually still had all the black pages with the little slits for postcards but you could you know use those even and put the pockets on top of that but I really liked um this type of binding and it's called um post binding or I think Chicago binding might be another one when I purchased these covers they were actually missing these posts 
Um, but I just loved the idea of how they would bind in like that and that you could just add more. So I thought, well, I can, I can get these and I can use that for my ephemera storage. There's two of them. And then I could also make my own, uh, you know, having been able to see how this went together, I could make my own maybe with a blank book cover. So I'm going to try to do that today. And I'll show you how I um, did my pages uh, for these that already had the, the binding in there. So I've got two of them. And the first one I did, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but everything gets covered up anyway. But I was using, I thought of, I need double-sided cardstock. And I had all this Tim Holtz double-sided cardstock that I could use. And then the off cuts from my pages I used for my pockets. But I thought, what a waste of expensive, you know, not expensive, but, you know, good paper because you're covering everything up anyway. So my second one I decided I would do with just um, inexpensive, less expensive cardstock. And this is really heavy cardstock. This is more than 110, I want to say. I'll have to look at my last purchase. It might be 200 pounds. I'm not sure. I'll need to look and see, but I really like how heavy it is. I'll try to find it and put a link down in the description um, when I find what, what that is by weight. So I've just used regular, you know, everything gets covered up, like I said, anyway. So I kind of actually like the cardstock better. Um, I did drop this. Everything's kind of uh, disheveled looking right now because I just dropped it on the floor and so stuff did fall out and I have a big mess on the floor. But I think, you know, as I make more pockets, the right sizes, I'll kind of spread everything out a little bit better anyway. So those are the two that I've started. It's a long kind of process, but it's a, well, not to make them, making all the little pockets, I think is what took the longest, but um, not hard to do. So I'm gonna show you real quick how I came to the pages. Um, so what you want to do is kind of make a template. Now, obviously this book was already had the spine in it. So all I did was measured this dimension here and this dimension here. You can measure your, um, your book liner page to know what size page you might want this to be. And then I didn't want it to hit all the way to the spine. So I kind of deducted an eighth or a quarter of an inch and then figured that is where I'm going to make my score mark. I'll show you on the new one that I'm, I'm working on. On this one, when I first, my first idea, I was thinking I wanted space. I wanted to keep my pages apart from each other. So I actually um, glued a piece of cardstock on the, just on the spine portion, front and back just to make those pages sturdier and kind of give them a little space from each other. I don't know that that's necessary. So I did not, I'm not doing that on the next one, um, but I thought I might need to do that. So um, that's kind of, this was the first one I started to do. Then um, this one again, I did not, um, this one does have it, but on these, I did not put that extra piece in between because I don't, I don't think it's necessary. So as far as these, um, if you're going to make one out of a blank book like I'm doing today, then you need that post and you need to create that little spine insert. So I have grabbed a, a book here and I don't have an extra bit of post. I don't, I did not bring those with me to the studio here, but I, they are called book binding posts. I'll find where I purchased them and put a link down below. But they, I found a, a kit of them uh, that came in three different sizes. So the little screw back is the same. And they're, I found them to be kind of a standard hole punch size hole. But the lengths are different. So this is a one inch, which I think is probably what I'm gonna use the most. But there was a one inch, half inch, and a quarter inch, I think, in the kit that I bought um, of like 100 pieces or whatever it was. So they weren't horribly expensive. But I thought they might be a good way for people who don't even like to do their buying their journals that you could maybe put your signatures in that way even. So um, it's just another option. Okay, so for our book, I have just a blank, um, happened to be similar size to my other ones. This one was an Atlas of the World book, which is kind of a neat, a neat idea since those other ones were kind of like periodicals. And then 
because it's an atlas book, I thought it would be fun. Um, I don't have any book cloth, so I thought it'd be fun to just print one of those maps from Bohemian Crafting onto fabric and use that as my um, inside spine. So to make this, I just measured, and you, you, you can do yours half an inch. These are three quarter of an inch wide this way by nine and a half inches this way. And again, I just measured my uh, this, this liner paper to see what size I wanted the height to be. So I, I made my nine and a half, and then this is three quarters. And then I, I don't want my pages to hit the spine, so I'm gonna make those a little bit different. But I have my two pieces. I just used that heavy card stock for these two pieces. And then for the back spine, and you can kind of see, I think, that there's a little gap in between. You know, they're not butted tight so that there's room for those to kind of be flexible. And this one, I wanted to make my spine about an inch, I think, for my, my posts. I can only have those be an inch. So I think I did this, um, yeah. This is my one inch, my one inch here. So it's gonna be, I probably should have made it a tiny bit smaller than the inch because I have a little bit of space on either side of this and I can, you know, this is only gonna be one, in, one inch this way for my, my post to fit in. So I might have, should have trimmed that off a little bit. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal to be exact because it, it'll just kind of be like this in a little bit. So make your piece, that's gonna depend on how wide your spine is here. Mine's a little bit bigger than that because you do have these spaces. So I think it's gonna work out fine um, because this is my, my one inch that I need. So you need your fabric to go you know, all around these. So when you measure for that, you gotta measure your one inch, a little gap, this three quarters and this three quarters, so that's an inch and a half on each of these. So that's three inches, four inches, and then it looks like I maybe have left a little more than it. So five, six and a half, seven inches maybe is the width that you need your fabric by however tall this is. So nine and a half by seven is probably what I did. And then to, to make this feel sturdy like book cloth, um, I just used my um, my quick glue. Again, you've seen me use this. I'll put a link down below. This one I have, and I've just been using it, and it turns out I love it for this type of thing um, because it was for lampshades um, bonding to similar surfaces. So you used it to put um, fabric onto lampshades. You're working with styrene, different things. Maybe you're attaching little trims and that sort of thing. So this glue is perfect. It's kind of like a PVA glue, I'm not sure. It's white, dries clear, but it's quick and I do like it. It's water-based, odorless, all that kind of stuff, non-toxic. So I'll put a link for that. I just have been using this bottle up because I had it. So just you know, brush this onto your cardstock lay the fabric down and then what i did i didn't put glue on this part of the fabric because this is going to get glued to my book but for this these parts i wanted it to have that sturdiness like book cloth so i did another coat um, or i may have used mod podge and just coated the outside of this fabric too to give it that uh, sturdiness you want it to be hard like that because for one thing i need to hole punch and it's much easier to do that once you've had that glue and it, that you've let it dry overnight. So this has actually been drying for a while. I put it under a couple of books because I just have cardstock on the inside so it did get kind of wonky when you got it wet with glue. So just put it under some heavy books. Once it's dry, it's just nice and flat and sturdy. So before I'm gonna glue it in, I wanted to go ahead and make punch my holes. Um, and then from there, I can measure to make my um, my base for my pages. So I went ahead and I just kind of did my whole centered. I could have done it a little off if I wanted, but I just centered it this way, marked my holes, and then used my hole punch. Now, hole punch, when I've marked my little hole, you know, I needed to be able to see where those are because I really want to get those lined up centered on each other and I can't like fold it in half you know, and punch them together or anything. For one thing, it's too thick. So I just kind of, if you open this little bit up and you can look through your hole, 
and find this, you know, find, try to eyeball the center as best you can and then punch it. So, um, you know, if you have a crop of dial, the large hole of that, the large punch is not quite big enough for, for this. You need to use a regular standard size hole punch. Um, because I had tried to do use this the first on one of my other ones um, attempts, and it, it it makes the hole punching easier, but the hole's not quite big enough. So you do need to use this regular one, and and I was able to just you know get it get it through um, the all those thicknesses with the fabric and everything. Okay, so I have this, and now I need to put it into my book, and I because I have. Um, a little extra, you know, space on either side. I really want to make sure I get that centered. So I think what I'm going to try to do is if I get this in there, is clip it with my fortunately one inch bulldog clip. So let's see if I can... to go up a tiny bit. There's probably a more exact way to do this, but I am. I am just gonna eyeball it and hope. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I am gonna just squirt some of this on and use a brush to smooth it out and just do one side and then the other. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry without fussing too much with it so that it, it adheres all the way in where I want it to because you could see there's a gap here. It's a floating spine. They had a piece of wood, you know, that fit in there, but I don't have that. And so we're gonna hope that it all stays together without that with this really good, strong glue if I let it dry. Okay, so that's my little piece that's in there. And then I just need to make these sheets so i want to do a template so i i measured uh this liner paper to know what kind of size i wanted my pages to be and mine came out to for mine um came out to nine and a half by six and a quarter okay so i did that um but then i have to score you know where this is going to fit in and i don't want this to go all the way to the back so i took this piece Where's my ruler? And it is three quarters. So I just dropped it. I pulled this ruler out just an eighth of an inch. So that gave me um, this flap here is going to be five eighths inches where I need to make my score mark. That way it offsets it from the back. And then my hole, because I had already punched them here, is at one quarter. So I just needed to, you know, make sure from Let's see, I made my score mark at 5 8 and then I put this in there where my score mark already was because I want to make sure I can fold that page back. So once I have that in there, then I could just draw my hole, trace my hole through the hole. So that's why I have those. And you can see they're kind of close to this edge. So on here, if it might have been better to move the hole just a tiny bit closer to this edge. So I think it's going to work fine though. So I'm just going to, this is going to be my template for future pages. And then I will again open this up so I can see 
and then just make my punch my hole. Okay, so now I have a template that I can just, you know, do a whole bunch of pages, however many pages I want to put in my book. Okay, so there are lots of videos out there of uh, making ephemera books. You know, everybody kind of has their different thing. Um, and I've seen them where they've, you know, put uh, the clear plastic, whatever they used, and sewn it right to this. I didn't want to do that for a couple reasons. I hadn't really kind of gone through all the different ephemera that I had. You know, different things are different sizes. And so I wasn't sure how big to make the pockets. I know that when I have the pocket, I want whatever is in there to stick up a little above it so that I'm not ripping these by, you know, trying to dig my finger in there. So I I wanted a bunch of different sizes. So I ended up just using my off cuts and then some because I wanted a lot of pockets um, from my cardstock. So these are the off cuts from making these pages. So I used those first and kind of just made different size pockets. Um, I know for mine, they were going on this, you know, six and a quarter. So I kind of figured that these were actually made for the other books, but five and a half fit. Now they're too wide for this book. Um, I'll need to make pockets, shorter ones for this particular book because these pages are a little narrower. So just measure what you have here. So this one is, I have five and a half. So maybe on this one, I want my pockets to just be five inches. And then, you know, I can make a whole bunch in different heights, like I said. So to make the pockets, these were all done, you know, like I said, for the other book. Um, is I'm going to cut my strips and I'll just do maybe this one. Um, I'm going to do five inches. So I'm just going to have a whole bunch of these. And then those are going to get glued down to my base. That way, if I rip one, I can, you know, replace it with another pocket. I haven't sewn them on. Sewing them straight to this with the clear on it, you know, or sewing the clear right on here, is then you have your stitching is on the other side, and then it's not covered up. That would bug me. So I thought, I'm just going to make a whole bunch of pockets. Then I can put them where I want them, depending on what ephemera is going to go on that page. And I, I can just expand and change this as I want. So to make these pockets, I also used recycled um, materials for that is my acetate. I just have a bunch of pieces that I've saved from packaging. You wanna choose the thicker ones, you know, the sturdier ones that you have. If you don't have any of that, these would work great too. These are just those um, page protectors. So you could use you could use these, but I have a whole bunch of this stuff that I save. So I just kind of take whatever size, you know, take the biggest size that you have. And then what I found was easiest to do is to just glue this. Um, it's not gonna be permanent. It's just to hold it in place while you sew. So I'm just gonna put a little bead of glue any kind of glue will do because it's not like i said permanent and then just stick them down then you don't have to worry if they're straight or not i don't know if you've ever tried to cut this acetate with a paper cutter or even scissors and get it straight it's really hard so the easiest thing to do is to just stick your things down fill up one of these pieces and then take them over to your sewing machine and then just sew you know, around the edge. Then you have a sheet of a bunch of these that are sewn on already. And then you wanna sew from, with the acetate on top, I think it's easier than having this be on the bottom and slipping around or anything. That, plus this is gonna be the top of your pocket and so your stitching will be on the top. So just sew around the edge and then to cut them out, then flip them over and from the back, you'll be able to actually feel that edge with your scissors. You would be able to just feel your edge and I'm not gonna do this whole thing because I don't have it sewn yet, but it makes it super easy to cut and get it straight. And the other thing is 
when you do a lot of these, you're gonna get so fast at this that you can actually just slide your scissor along that edge and cut that right off. So that was super fast and easy. I'll need to stitch this one still, but um, so make a whole bunch of these pockets, different sizes, and then just use your art glitter glue, whatever kind of glue you use. And then I just eyeballed all of mine. Um, like I said, these are a little bit wide, but just, you know, put them wherever you want and then put all your ephemera inside. Um, if you don't have a book or want to make a book like that, like I said, you can use photo albums, old photo albums. I had actually used way back when um, binder pages, you can get those binder page protectors that are like baseball card size. They're a little bit too deep, you know, for some things you have to really, it's harder to dig in those. I found myself not using that as much. I think I'll use these more, again, not dropping it on the floor because everything fell out. Um, but the other thing that you can do um, is, if you don't wanna do that and you have a little box that you have, is I got these little, um, actually these are just little acetate bags, but I, these are these little mini CD bags. And they're, they're square shaped because they're for little CDs. That's actually the flap that goes over. I had a bunch of these, so I thought, you know what, I can use those. And I just leave them open because this way I have a place to put label what they are and then I can tuck all the little things in there. And I this wasn't bad. This is what I did to bring some of my stuff to Studio B here. And I can kind of just flip through like this. You know, it's another way to store them. And this works okay, but I don't have very many of these boxes and I really like using them for things like this. So I think I'm gonna end up putting these in my books and then using this box for when I make cards up ahead of time, that sort of thing, then I have a place to kind of keep those and flip through them as I want, you know, need things to put in journals. I'm hoping that these envelope ones that I'm doing too, um, that those can kind of fit in here too. See, now I'll have, this is a little big, but you know, some of them might fit. Um, you know, these are a little wide. I need a little bit wider of a box or, you know, put them this direction. But I do like being able to kind of, you know, have some things made up now and then just flip through and, and find what I need. So just some ideas for storing things. Um, I think that is about it for my ephemera storage. If I find something else that works really well, maybe someday I'll do a follow-up. But um, I think I'm going to like this. I just, like I said, I need to, I need to thin it out and spread things out a little bit more so there's not so much in, in one pocket. So as I get more pockets attached, um, then I think that'll be just perfect. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Um, again, questions in the comments and I will see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.